Hello and welcome to CR Wrestling Commentary. Your host Cedric and Cedra here. We'll be answering viewers. Uh, we have Zimbo Times 2 and we also sort of had Alzanta, but Alzanta's question, um, I mean, it was really hard to decipher what it was and it was, do wrestling move posts to be safe or dangerous? And we didn't know if he meant the post on the ring, um, posting moves that you see online or something. And so I did ask him on, on Discord and he just wanted to know about the wrestling game, uh, Fire Pro Wrestling World. And, you know, honestly, to answer that, then, uh, you know, if you want to post something on YouTube, it's not it's not dangerous. You can you can post on YouTube safely. I, I do a whole show I, I've done. The show for quite a bit <laughs> you know it's a it's a long playlist but I've, I've got my years of fire pro up there uh so it's it's safe you can post the moves you can post a whole event you know just make sure you're not taking somebody else's work with you know if you do make sure you have their permission to do so you know don't don't take somebody's wrestler edit fighter or whatnot and then at like you made it or don't give any credit always give credit where it's due that's number one you know it shows kindness and it helps spread the word of that of that promoter or whatnot so and, always and, give credit and it shows integrity yes integrity very important very important and then we get to the one that's on screen here Zembo times two uh i am going to read what he had to say first Zemo always have great retorts, always. And I don't think, see, I don't think you read this. I don't. No, I didn't. Okay, I've read it a few times, so I'm gonna read it. Just and my eyes are tired. I mean, I I got like just six minutes before starting this, my eyes was like, hey, what? Sleep. I was like, oh no, not now. <laughs> I, I swore I was gonna do this today. Um, just because we ate. It could be. Could not be. You know? It'll be what I say it is. It's because we ate. You're just going to be defiant. Yeah, I am. Okay. Demo 12. It's times two. Times two. Okay. He said, sorry to hear about your health, CR. Get some rest and get well soon, man. And you know what? I got some rest. And I'm getting well. It's just the back of my throat is still kind of torn up and if I strain too much is I'm, I'm probably going to rupture it and bleed and if I twist uh, my torso too much then I'll probably tear my stomach open wherever it was slightly torn and I do not want to you know be vomiting up blood again that was not fun so I think that was all in your throat my, it, it, it's, I'm torn in two places so most likely my throat but the way it was coming up it was a lot and I wasn't doing a lot of swallowing before the throwing up so I think it's both, you know, I think it's in both areas. Both are contributing. I don't know which one is contributing more, but one of them was. And it probably was the throat that was contributing more. It's just, I know it was bad in my stomach. I've, I have actively swallowed blood before and it tastes the same, well, feels the same in the stomach now as it did way back then. So that's my experience I'm going with for my stomach. You know, maybe that won't coming up at all. I don't know, but it, blood coming up, not good, not fun. But I am getting better, and we're going to get a, a far low dosage of the stuff. Um, see how that do. Uh, nice is. Now, as for the New Japan Pro Wrestling Clash AEW theme, now is not the time to do a working relationship with any company. The risk of COVID-19 is too high. And even if it was not for COVID, I'd rather see New Japan Pro Wrestling work for Major League Wrestling and the National Wrestling Alliance more than All Elite Wrestling. Outside the nice tribute show for Brody Lee, AEW is no better than WWE. They sign loads of people and do not know what to do with most of them, booking stupid gimmick matches and being very careless when it comes to COVID. Uh, yeah, which is very, very true. Very true. Tony, what Tony Khan, uh, Tony should have fired Chris for putting everyone in danger. Yes. He should. And just to be honest, just to add something to that, Zemo, um, those people could sue Chris Jericho. They really could. Yeah. 
he, they could they could sue him for endangering them. They really should. Um, but he he wrote. <laughs> I gotta pick on you, Zimbo. You, you wrote Christ instead of Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know who you're talking about, so it's okay. It's okay. Uh, Chris used to be one of my favorite wrestlers, but now he is a shell of his former self. Yeah, he was Lionheart. Chris Jericho loved him. Then he went to Y2J. Not a fan. Um, yeah, which Lionheart was, was long, long ago. Yep, but he was Lionheart until he was gone, and then shows up as Y two J. That also has something to do with your question at the end, which we'll get to. Um, okay, just an ego, just an ego maniac looking for attention, just like Omega and the one sided partnership with Impact. Not really a partnership since Kenny and AEW has made Impact look like weaklings. No Impact star has appeared on Dynamite except for Carl and Doc, and that is only because of their ties with Omega. Now they are bootleg Bullet Club. Man, that was so factually true. <laughs> Good grief. He put that he he put that that was all succinct right there. <laughs> that was like, you know, pick your face up, y'all. Because that's mess is true. Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows, they look like people you really shouldn't beat. But then again, you know, it's just like when I showed them to her, she was like, they don't really look any different. They didn't look any different to me. But I was watching them on AEW in the ring with them dudes, and yeah, it was just the comparison. Yeah, because all the dudes on AEW look like 20-year-old boys. They look like they haven't, you know, got... They don't They look, haven't grown hair down there yet. They don't look like they can whoop nobody. You know, they that's, look one like, thing, that's one of the things I, I agree with Joe Cornetta about. You get look like you can whoop somebody. Who's going to be scared of the Young Bucks or private party? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Oh, no. It's the Young Bucks. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't laugh with so much because it'll, it's going to mess up my throat. I'm sorry. I know that. He should go messing with I'm me. I'm sorry. Keep keep reading. He should go messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> and all because Don, Don Callis, the Omega fanboy, you know, I'm, I'm sure he wipes Omega's ass with his tongue frequently, um, wanted Kenny to appear on his show and hog the spotlight at the expense of the Impact roster. Yes. That's what's so sad. And then I think he calls out something else, too. Uh, let's see. CZW Combat Zone Wrestling and Ring of Honor was a better invasion angle because both sides gained a victory and were booked to look strong but uh but one never overtook the other so far this invasion has been a joke and only exists to boost the ego of omega i am hoping this partnership with new japan will only extend to mox and kenta for the u.s belt and yeah look dot yeah because of you know their history with Omega so briefly. Yeah, but that's, that's why they got in. And just to be honest with you, I refuse to have the legacy that um, Doc and Gallows have. I think what they, I think their names were at one point were bad intentions. I have no idea. And then, you know, in Bullet Club, I don't know what it was. And now they're the Good Brothers. Fuck that name. Fuck yeah, that's that a dumb name. name. The Good Brothers. That name is outright stupid. The, it the, really is. And this comes from a guy that got two female wrestlers. One named Nice Nice and the other Bad Bad. What happened to names of tag teams that were menacing like Demolition? Doom. The Powers of Pain. You know? The Heart Foundation. You know, things that makes it look. Anything the, that has Samoans in it. <laughs> the Samoan SWAT team. What the headhunters. The head shrinkers. The, I mean, yeah, there was there were a lot. You know, the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. Good grief. Private I mean, private party. What's them three dudes called? SoCal something or other? Yeah, SoCal Uncensored. SoCal Uncensored. Southern California. I, I know. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And, I'm so afraid. Yeah. It's uh, it's 
bad. Is is it the hybrid two? Not to mention the dumbass best friends. Best friends, how close are you? I, I, I just <laughs> the young bucks. The young bucks were great for that name when they were young, young bucks. When they were young, it fit. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. Now they. Now they just need to be the bucks. That'd be cool. And it could go either way. You know, you got the the antlers or you got the money. You and they'll and they'll always be discount Hardy Boy Hardy Boys. I, honestly, I picked that out when I first saw them. Yeah, me too. I said they it's like the Hardy Boys. It's like the Hardy Boys with a little bit of the rockers in them. That's really what I saw. Um, they're gonna be old with sideways knees too. <laughs> And then he goes on, uh, Zimbo goes on to say, speaking of which, I have to say that the IWGP US belt is one of the most worthless belts in wrestling right now. What was the point of making that belt if you're just going to put it on a man who doesn't care about it? As soon as Kenta wins that belt, I hope he throws it away. Just get rid of that belt. If the company does not care about it, they should not have, they should not have it around in the first place. I hate to say it, but I am bored with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Aside from a few wrestlers I love, I just cannot get into New Japan Pro Wrestling match much. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, New Japan match anymore. The questionable booking, lack of respect for the tag division, same matches over and over again, and the disrespect towards certain wrestlers has really gotten under my skin. Naito losing at Wrestle Kingdom was the last straw for me. I said he was going to lose. Yeah, you did. I said he was going to lose because they stupid. Uh, yeah, we guess that we're going to put it on, on Coda. Yep, we knew that too. You should not know what they're going to do ahead of time. You shouldn't know. You know, it should be like going, like we finally see the setup. We see who's in the match. Dang, now you can start making your assumptions. No, we, we knew this way in advance. Coda must be a negotiator out the ass because, you know, it ain't like he went through the New Japan dojo. And he got all this shit real fast after signing his lifetime contract. They still fucking Sonata over. Yeah, because he's going to be the first defense. He must be a shrewd negotiator. I mean, he must got pictures of them with like monkeys in the jungle having sex. He got something on them. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> he saw somebody diddling somebody. He said he'd be something because they grief. He, okay. He, he goes on to say, no offense to Kota. But Naito deserved to be a nice long reign. But once again, Ghetto and the, the rest of the booking team screws him over again. I did watch Shingo vs. Hiroshi, but halfway through, I just became bored. And I hate that. I hate the fact that I have become bored with New Japan, but I cannot overlook their problems anymore. I fell in love with this company in 2015, and I have been watching it for the past six and a half years now. But it has become the WWE of Japan. Uh, Noah, on the other hand, has been going strong. Ooh, yeah. It is content. Yeah, we, we're like, <laughs> I'm having to learn. So we're watching too late. And I'm like, man, I'm tired. You know, I, it's like I'm always working off of like four to six hours of sleep. So once it's about six or seven o'clock, when it's 7.34 p.m. right now, I'm kind of like, man, sleep. That'd be cool. <laughs> Let's see, but it has become, yeah, the WWE of Japan. Noah, on the other hand, has been going strong. It is, it um, it is content, is content with doing its own thing and not trying to appeal to the Western fans. I plan on watching more Noah this year. Of course, there is so much good wrestling besides Noah that it will be hard to keep up. That and my personal life to deal with. And if you want suggestions for future videos, I have one. When did you start watching WWE? Take care, CR. So, thank you, Zebo Times 2. Well, we like reading your comment. You know, we like this. Hey, look. Hey, Zemo. Take. Hey, look. You probably do real well with money. That's what I'm assuming. Whether you are or you're not. I suggest, um, honestly, starting a blog. The comments you leave for us, put it on Medium. You know, people are looking for content there. Put your stuff on Medium. 
and you know have it curated it's all good you know I would just say use word or something like that to um, not grammarly don't use grammarly but um, use Microsoft Word or something like that to do spell check and sentence correction and stuff because uh, grammarly will just take away all your personality yeah it'll just take it all away uh, you know but these are blog worthy just get them up there I just say link to the video that you're responding to so they can know what sparked it and plus it's a little plug towards me but you know that's just me though you know but, you know help each other out man help each other out um what's going on with you and New Japan pretty much what happened with us in WWE um so I'll be direct and then we're gonna have to literally do seriously gonna have to elaborate because there is some nuance with this uh okay so here's the thing when did we stop watching wwe we stopped basically permanently as you just said earlier when i talked when i told her your question when benoit died that's when we pro prominently just we were just done um but before that it was already slowing down a great deal since like 96 97 it started slowing down then when Cedra got into college it was sort of 50 50 watching WCW and World Wrestling Federation it was the attitude era ish um, it was like attitude era and slowly going towards not slowly but starting to get to that aggression or whichever I think aggression might have been I, I don't care I don't care um, some other company I would actually care enough to do research and be like oh this was first I don't care when it comes to yeah it was it was it was the attitude era and then it was the whole uh, the ruthless aggression and that was the introduction of John Cena and that was also you know Benoit as champion toothless aggression mm -hmm. and all that <laughs> okay so when Benoit died we just didn't give it I literally it just we didn't care we did not care anymore. We, we were anti WWE. Not going out and say, hey, everyone, you should hate them, but we just said no more. And not to mention that everything they did was dumb. I mean, we can rattle off all this stupid, antic crap that they did. The no wrestling, you watch two to three hours and you see uh, two and a half wrestling matches, a bunch of Brian Panty floundering. You know, seemingly Kane raping Lita and getting her pregnant. A bunch of dumb shit. We, we were basically forced to wing ourselves off of WWE. And not wing like we just love WWE. We, we, I like professional wrestling. All right. That's me. I love wrestling. I pretty much grew up watching National Wrestling Alliance. So watching Sting, Flair, um, Luger, the Andersons, you know, um, Horsemen when they were and were not together, Barry Windham, Michael Rotunda, um, good grief, all that stuff, you know, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, the Steiner Brothers, Doom, the uh, Road Warriors, <laughs> Rock and Roll Express, Midnight Express, Just watching all that stuff. You know, really was, you know, I mean, the Freebirds, the later ones, you know, Garvin and Hayes and ultimately Bad Street joined and then he kind of went away, which I think he was Brad Armstrong, I think. Um, it, it didn't really matter. Um, you know, Kevin Nash's Oz, it was just stuff like that. And it won't everyone had an angle and all that. No. It won't that, but I got to see wrestling, you know, and when it came to WWF, it was bright. It was annoying. Um, the only ones that I watched there was Rowdy Roddy Piper. I thought he was always WWF. You know, I, I, I was, hey, I was a little kid, man. So, <laughs> um, and then, you know, you got the whole Monday Night Wars thing. And what happened was, 
when those Monday Night Wars really heated up, right, I'm going to say after NWO were fully established and whatnot, it just got to the point where if you turn to WWF, you're, you're seeing talking. Yep. You turn to WCW, you're seeing talking and or wrestling or talking right after wrestling or talking leading up to wrestling. And you turn back to WWE and it's still Triple H in the ring or DX in the ring or somebody in the ring talking. Steve Austin, McMahon, somebody is going to be talking. The Rock, somebody's going to be talking. So we would literally watch WCW, turn to WWE, talking. Go back to WCW, it's a commercial. Go back to WWE, it's talking. Go back, the commercial's over eventually after about three to five minutes. You get some wrestling done, but then they're going with some stupid mess. So then we go to WWE to see what's kicking. Always a run-in. Yeah, it's a run-in or it's the same person talking or getting right to the end of it. And someone's got to come down to the ring for more talking. So we turned back to WCW. That kept happening. It got to the point where we would only watch WWE during WCW's commercials. And we watched it not for the talking. We watched for people we knew could go. So we would watch um, Ron Simmons slash Farouk. We watched La Resistance. We watched Eddie. Guerrero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, Edge before he went stupid um, Kurt Angle um, before he went stupid um, we, we weren't really interested in John Cena too much for a little bit at first when, it, he, when he first got from Smackdown yeah and kind of developed his own personality and then he stopped doing his moves the way he used to yep and Shelton Benjamin Hassan Benjamin you know they took Haas away because you know how they do they stupid mess. They get a tag team and they pick out the one that should be a, that could be a star of the tag team, separate the tag team, and then dump the other one out like he means nothing. And they, you know, they WWE is notorious for forming something that was awesome, like Evolution was awesome. And then took it away. Evolution was awesome, and then they the music. It. Flair, Flair was running that he was being JJ Dillon for them. The music, the look. The the way they wrestled, they was so impressive, and then they destroyed it. They just went away. It did. It, yeah, they didn't really break up per se. It just went away. That's how I remember it. No, they they they, you know, the star of it was Randy Orton. Mm -hmm. Triple H couldn't stand that, so they had to turn on Orton, and then that's when it started crumbling. So, I mean, that's just what Vince does. That's what all sports entertainment people do. Even E Feds. They get a tag team or they get a group together and break it up. They just love doing it. It's so I think it's so dumb to do that. It's like it's like getting married and you spend five years and it's wonderful. And when you're gonna have your five year anniversary and you've had no problems and everything's been great, you file for divorce. Be like, why? You know these things got to just move on. Nothing went bad. We were real happy. I love them, but we just gotta we just gotta separate it's over. So WWE was doing that. Oh, and and one more thing, they always make chicken shit heel champions. Yeah. Every heel champion was a chicken shit. Jericho was a chicken shit. Triple H was a big ass chicken shit. Kurt Edge Angle. Edge was a chicken shit. Kurt Angle was a chicken shit. But what the fuck? The only one that wasn't was Steve Austin. Or Undertaker. They even made the Rock was all about bringing it until he won the title and he and as a heel and then he's got to run. He heel. got to run away. Like, what the hell? Can't they have a, a heel with the belt that's got some goddamn balls? You get and I was tired of it. I, I was, mean, they got well, Jim. I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Jim Cornette calls it go home heat. They had Tai Chi heat Zemo every single one of them. You know, when when at this age now a wrestler gets hurt, you don't want to get hurt. You want to be able to live their lives and, 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 and enjoy, you know, being alive. They had such go home heat, they could have like stepped out the ring and fell into the black pit of despair and kept falling into the center of the earth 
and I wouldn't have given a shit. Yeah, she seriously didn't care. <laughs> didn't oh, care. damn. They failed forever. Next match? Literally, That's how much they suck. Chris Jericho, Lionheart Chris Jericho, he won't really get in his due in WCW, but we loved him. In WCW, we loved him. And it was all funny. He leaned against the railing, and the crowd just beat the hell out of his chest. Just pat, 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 pat. Just loving up on some Jericho. You know, the girls loved him. Man, you can't get that today. Just be no. a bunch of... Be a mass fest at the damn thing. <laughs> a mass fest for real. <laughs> Lean against the railing, dudes be like, "What are you doing here? <laughs> Going to the back, man." No, I want you. Unless you get beat with something you don't want to get beat with. Jericho shows up on WWF. I think it was still F, and he's Y two J. So I was like, "Ugh, you know, nice intro, decent music, um, and." I, I was like, we'll just see how he is. Yeah. And then he gets in, he wrestles. His debut wrestling match, he puts on that Walls of Jericho. I said, fuck this guy. <laughs> he put on nothing but a, uh, it was an elevated Boston Crab, but he didn't put the knee to the back of the head. He didn't do any of that. So I was like, this, this, fuck this. I don't care anymore. You know, you, you just, it, you was only, you've been out that we know of only for just a month or two. What the fuck? You don't know how to do your move anymore? And you know, because we're fans, we, we don't care about wrestling politics. Mm -hmm. You know, do your shit. You know, and then he and, and just like anyone else that come to a wrestling promotion, hey, you're here, thanks. We'll give you this belt. Mm -hmm. He wins a belt, and he keeps the belt. And he talks trash. He won't stop talking trash. That's that's all he was doing. Okay, same old, same old, and being a chicken shit heel wrestling champion. Just like everybody else, whether they are face or not. Get bored with that. The women's division we enjoy. Trish Stratus, Jazz, Molly Holly. Uh, Stacey Cuba could have ate a dick. We didn't care. No, didn't care. She could not wrestle. She did not look good in that ring. All we saw was a long-legged skinny girl. And, and everybody loved her. And I'm like, I want to see somebody with meat, someone that can take some damage. You know, as a valet, she'd be great. Get up there, show your long legs, you know, show your no ass, and have fun. But if I see a female wrestler, I want her to have some meat on her. So when she gets slammed, she looks like she should be able to get up. Mm -hmm. You know, Stacy gets slammed, and oftentimes they had to pull her up. I don't know if y'all remember that. That mess was aggravating, you know. Um... I'm like, get up. You are a trained athlete. Get up. In any case, you know, seeing that stuff drove us away from even watching it like we would want to. It's professional wrestling. I don't want to turn my back on professional wrestling. But they was I was just like, I can't I can't do this. So yeah, we watched them only during WCW's, you know, commercial breaks. Ah, and then they killed WCW. They killed WCW. That I got that on tape. Sting versus Flair. It's somewhere on videotape. Uh, I got it somewhere. But and I know and I've seen it online. But I watch, even then when I watched it, I teared up. I was like, it's all over. It's all over. This is what happens when you become a monopoly. You ruin it. These guys aren't going to give a, be getting a fair shake in WWE. E because one they're pissed that they had to change their name from WWF because you know a wildlife group beat them out two all right two WCW been at war with WWF uh, E you don't take kindly to those you were just arguing with these people are gonna lose their jobs and we're never gonna see great wrestling again you know, just never going to see him again. And everyone they took from WCW, they never used properly. Booker T gained the, what, his five-time championship. I think that was just all WCW, won't it? No, he had some title reigns in WWE. He did well in WWE. He did well, he but, did well. you know, the whole NWO thing, I thought that, I just view, I view that, I just view that as racist, you know, because Booker looked like he didn't really see it coming. Um... He didn't see that coming. 
I don't know. It's hard. It's hard for me to tell. I, I truthfully don't really care now. Back then, I cared a lot. Now I'm like, ah. you know, that's where I am at. Ah. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when Ben, you know, people were getting hurt, people were dying, you know, concussions like crazy, and that was coming out. And it was, you know, everyone that was formerly with WWE. And it's like, good grief. These pe th this company is killing people. Yeah. You know, Eddie Guerrero died. That, that broke our hearts. Mm-hmm. And then I, and I said, Eddie's gone. I said, who is Vince going to kill next that came from WCW? It's going, you know, it was going, Saturn, Saturn, he's MIA. Mm -hmm. Who, no one knows where he is. Then Dean Malenko said, I'm, I'm saving my life, I'm getting out of here. And then Benoit dies. You know, yeah, Malenko stayed on as a trainer. Yeah, but he, he stayed behind the scenes. Yeah, he was behind the scenes, so he stayed all right. Then Benoit died. And it was like, yeah, Benoit, he, he died. And, you know, and I was like, shit. I was pissed. I said, fuck this show. Fuck everything about him. You know, I couldn't do it anymore. And then, um, you know, the whole murder thing come out. And yeah, I'm like, like, his ass don't exist. Like he yeah, never existed. Yeah, and like he never existed. And I was like, you don't treat somebody like that. You know, the, but he killed Nancy. That's what everyone was upset about. And then it took, it took months before people was like, he killed his kids. Oh yeah, let's yeah, let's not forget about the kids. One kid, you know, yeah, one. And the others, and then the rumor, the other escaped. And then and I'm like, has anyone ever thought that Benoit just won himself? And you then know? that comes out, and it still don't make a difference. It don't make a difference. You know, didn't make a difference, and. I just, anyone that's like, you know, blames Benoit for what happened, I don't, I, I am not exactly uh, liking that person because they rather go with that than understanding that wasn't Benoit by any means. That wasn't Benoit. He was done. Benoit probably didn't even, wherever Benoit was in that head, he won't in control. Mm-hmm. I've gone through my own episodes to even understand that. So I have far more experience than the people that just, it's easy for them to jump on the bandwagon of hatred so that they can feel accepted in a group. No, nah, when you know what Benoit has done and then you hear that, you know that won't Benoit. You know that won't Benoit. He would, you know Benoit wouldn't condone anything like that by any means. Um, so I just, after Benoit died, I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't. And then was it after that Owen died? Owen? No, he'd been gone. Yeah. He had been gone. He had been gone. In the nineties. Yeah. When Owen died, that was, I remember being stunned on that. I was just, I was stunned. I, I couldn't stop being stunned about Owen. Not about legacy and, and, and like, you know, because I didn't really, I didn't really know the, who the Blue Blazer. I didn't see any of that at the time. I didn't see Owen too much in WWF or WWE. I didn't see too much of him there. I know I watched his match with Bret Hart, this cage match. I watched all that build up. I know how he can wrestle. I know how he can go, and he's extremely versatile. So he can mimic somebody else's style with no problem. Um, it's just, you know, normally when wrestlers die, they're old. And he wasn't, and that was kind of a jacked up thing for me. That's where I was. It wasn't about, I got to think about my life now. None of that crazy, wimpy mess, no. Mine was, this dude ain't even close to old and he died what happened and then my friend was telling me about it and, and i was like wait he just fell out the sky 
It's like, yeah, man, he fell. You know, he was on the harness and dropped. That's like, they killed him. And then, you know, and here in the South, at least where I am, the whole rumor of Owen Hart was assassinated started. Um, so that's what that did. It's just too much. It's too much. It's a long way to answer the question. But like I said, we started in the beginning, you know, when Benoit died. You know, if you want to stop it there, fine. But it's just all of this other stuff leading up to it. And even even after Benoit, it wasn't cold turkey. We didn't just quit. It, it continued to, to taper off to nothing. It was, it's been, it's like, well, it's been a few months. Let's see what's going on. Okay, it's been another few months. Let's see what's going on. We would just look at it every, and now he's saying, no, it ain't watching the show. It's watching Three to six minutes. And we're like, what is this stupid shit? What you mean Edge hurt? What you mean leaders hurt? Okay, who, this person's hurt? What happened to Shane Helms? Okay, wait, wait so Mick Foley's hurt now. What? It, that's what was going on. It just, you just didn't care. We didn't, we didn't care. It just, we just got ground down and just said, fuck it. And hadn't, and hadn't watched, I mean, watching WWE was something that it, it, every few months. Then we just didn't. Yeah. We just simply didn't. For a long time, for years. For years. We didn't. And then we moved, we moved uh, out the apart. We moved out into the uh, Section 8 apartment. Got out of there. Our daughter was watching. Was watching New Japan. Daughter's watching New Japan. You know, she's was, she was three and a half. Sit down and just watch it with us. She'd be four. She'd be five. You know, she'd be six. You know, she's growing. And then it's like, look, it's been a while since we've seen some WWE. Shinsuke Nakamura went there. That is what made me want to. You know, I was like, Shinsuke's there. Okay, he gonna, they're going to ruin him and water him down. Okay. And then Bobby Roode win. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, Bobby Roode and Shinsuke Nakamura, they wrestled for the NXT title. It was an awesome, classic, epic five-star match. You got to see it. So I broke my ass to look for that match. My daughter's with me. You know, she just, but yeah, hi. And... We're watching the match. We can't really blow it up, but we're watching it. So she watches the intros. And I'm looking at her. She's looking at the intro. She's intrigued. Okay, flashy intros. Way more than what she's used to. She loved it. She loved the New Japan intros. She liked their wrestlers. She liked the way the wrestlers looked. She liked the way the wrestlers behaved. And she's watching She's Get Nakamura. And she looks like, oh, I recognize. Not recognize him, but he's Japanese. So this got to be good. They get in the ring and they just taunt and boast the fans. After two minutes of that, my daughter just shook her head and lost interest and walked away. I said, You I said, You gonna just leave? And she just kept walking. I looked at her, I called her name and I said, What's wrong? She said, Bored. <laughs> I said, Well, you gotta give him a chance to wrestle. She said, eh. Tired of waiting, she walked off. <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest with you. After that, it was hard for her to be interested in New Japan. Yeah. Why? Because the next New Japan thing she sees is Chris Jericho. That takes forever to get anything started in the ring. She got sullied after that. She didn't care. I watched that Nakamura Bobby Roode match, and I was and, and and I was like, these two people are five star match makers without a problem, and the match ends with a fake ass injury by Nakamura. It was lame. The match was short. The match was bullshit. Neither one of them showed you what they could do by any stretch of the imagination. I was like, done. Done. 
the best I'll do is watch a WWE clip if I'm looking up a certain wrestling move that I can't find somewhere else. That's it. If I'm looking up a wrestling move and I see WWE, I move on. I'll look for something else. I have to be cornered to watch WWE. I got to have nothing left. So, I wanted to make sure I answered this question as full as I could. But, yeah, the very last WWE that we watched outside. NXT, we watched. We watched an uh, episode of NXT when uh, they were competing against AEW. Yeah. We might have saw an episode or two. And in comparison to the crap that we've seen years previously in WWE. It's a mass improvement. It's a mass improvement, but. Compared to AEW, it's like epically, it's pro wrestling personified in comparison. But. We were not compelled to continue watching. Nothing we wanted to tune into the next week. They lack urgency. And they lack looking different from each other. They are edits. They are not pro wrestlers. They are edits. So right now, you know, we keep up with Ring of Honor and... That's about it. We'll, and, we'll, and we're it, starting with Noah, but I we're going to also look for SWE. <laughs> what? I was impressed with Noah is what I said. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to just see how Oh, oh and NWA, uh, yeah, that we, one too. Whenever we can, you know... They, I don't know what's going on with NWA, but they're holding on. They're trying to hold on. So long, just don't give in to Impact and AEW, and we fine. Uh, but yeah, that's. I hope we answered everything. Um, if if hey any any of you listening, and including you, Zemo times two, if you got any other questions about anything, um, you know, hey, just put it down in the comment section, you know, of this video. Um, if you you know you you know. You can make it specific if you want. You're like, hey, Cedric or Cedra, you know, I want to know this. And if you wanted to just get both of our views on it, then obviously just ask blanketly. Just what do you think about this, CR? You know, OK, we'll both answer. But you, you can be very specific. And, you know, one will abstain while the other just talk. Not unless something has to, a question or so has to be provoked out, you know, just for, further the question, yeah. uh, the answer or something. But other than that, yeah, you know, so. I'm glad y'all been listening. So this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary, answering viewers, Zemo Times 2 and Alzanta. Thank y'all for listening.